I'm going to be explaining the concept of volume of distribution of drugs today. The volume of distribution of drugs is basically the apparent volume in which the drug gets dissolved in after it reaches a state of equilibrium in the body. Now let me try to explain this concept using a simple example. Imagine that you have a container which has water in it but you do not know the volume of water. Now this is similar to the human body which has some fluids in it but you cannot estimate all the fluids in which the drug is going to get dissolved in. Now I take some drug, I have some weighing machine and I also have an instrument which can measure concentration. Now imagine I measure 1000 milligrams of the drug and I then dissolve it in this water in the container. I dissolve it completely and after it gets dissolved I measure the concentration and let's say I estimate it to be 50 milligrams per liter. Now I know that the drug which I dissolved has got completely dissolved in this volume of water in this container. So it should basically take up that space which the water took. So the volume of distribution of this particular drug in this example is going to be the volume of water here. So I know that concentration is nothing but weight by volume and I can rearrange this equation to get my volume. Volume is equal to weight by concentration. I've just switched places of concentration and volume. Now, as in my example, I have volume is equal to or volume of distribution is equal to 1000 milligrams divided by 50 milligrams, which gives me 20 liters. So 20 liters is the volume of water in the container and it's the volume of distribution of the drug in this example. Now, imagine it's very similar in a human being where the drug that you're going to give is going to get dissolved in certain fluids and it's going to uh, occupy that particular space in the human body. So how do I estimate volume of distribution in human beings? First I'm going to inject the drug and then I wait the wait for the drug to go into equilibrium and then I take a sample again from the blood and measure its concentration and I use the same formula volume of distribution is equal to the weight of the drug or drug mass divided by concentration and there I'll get the volume of distribution of the drug in the human uh, body because see the volume of distribution is basically the volume that is getting occupied by the drug it's very difficult to measure the volume per se in the human being so we measure it using the concentration so unfortunately though there's a simple problem that can happen in human being unlike the container the human beings when you inject the drug the drug actually reaches the blood and from the blood, it's always possible that the drug could go into different organ systems. It could go into the liver, it could go into the brain, it could go into the lungs, it could go anywhere. And because of this, there will be a slight fall in the concentration in the blood because obviously the drug is reaching into different organs. Now because of that and the fact that we actually measure the concentration from the blood, we will estimate a different volume of distribution. Now let's say in the same case, now, because of the fact that some drug has gone into different organs, my final concentration which I find in the blood is 20 mg per liter. Now, compare it from the previous case where it was 50 mg per liter. Now, when I try to calculate the volume of distribution, volume of distribution is equal to 1000 mg divided by 20 mg per liter, which gives me 50 liters. Now, 50 liters is apparently a huge volume compared to the 20 liters, which is actually the amount of fluids in the container. So this is known as apparent volume of distribution. Because of the fact that drugs move away from the blood into various organ systems, you tend to estimate a higher volume of distribution because of the fact that the concentration in the blood goes down. This is known as apparent volume of distribution and it's a very important concept. So higher the volume of distribution, you have an idea that more amount of drug is leaving from the blood into various organ systems. Lesser the volume of distribution means more amount of blood stays within the vascular space or within the blood and does not go effectively into various organ systems. So this is the concept of volume of distribution. We're going to talk more about this when we talk about the protein binding and how it can affect the volume of distribution. Thank you.